scientific discoveries, overcoming impossible feats, or teaching school. As all of you make your way through time, you will build memories with your peers, friends, and family. I remember such people for being hard workers, as well as caring and compassionate family members. I also remember my great, 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 great grandpa a lot too. I remember him for his bravery, honor, and persistence. Eddie Rickenbacker was born on October 8th 1890 in Columbus, Ohio. He was the son of a German-speaking Swiss immigrant family. His family decided to change their last name by removing the H and placing a K where it is now due to the anti-German atmosphere at the time. His father worked hard to support his family and in the early years, Edward was no help. According to HistoryNet.com, Edward smoked at age five and headed a group of mischievous <laughs> youngsters known as the Horsehead Gang. <laughs> that all changed very quickly though. His father died at work when he was 12 and the incident forced Eddie to, to drop out of school and work many jobs to support his family. In the years following, he picked up names such as Eddie, Captain Eddie, and Fast Eddie. Fast Eddie coming from his racing career. Before going to the military, Eddie was an avid racer and according to HistoryNet.com set a world speed record at 134 mile an hour at Daytona in 1914. Later, Fast Eddie decided to volunteer when the United States entered World War I. He wanted to be a pilot, but there was a problem. The maximum age for pilot training in the military was 25 and he was 27 at the time. This is where his persistence come in. He proceeded to talk to high-ranking military officials until finally he was accepted for flight training after claiming to be 15 or 25 years old. Eddie was remembered as brave and honorable due to his military experience. According to HistoryNet.com, after only 17 days as a student pilot, Eddie graduated and was commissioned a lieutenant and assigned to the 94th Aero Squadron based out of France. Unfortunately, many of his squad members did not like them as most of them come from Ivy League schools and he didn't even finish school, let alone college. He persisted once again and showed his bravery in ways no other pilot would dare. According to HistoryNet.com, Rickenbacker's technique was to approach his intended victims carefully, closer than others dared before firing his guns. According to History.com, Rickenbacker's ended the war as America's ace of aces with a total of 26 victories in his name. Bravery was key to his many air victories as being a fighter pilot in World War I was extremely risky. Most pilots would be lucky to live through a couple engagements. Eddie's tactics put him in even more danger. In the later years, he was remembered for being honorable for his actions. Uh, and Edward was also a huge morale boost when other pilots flew with him and they even considered it an honor. According to HistoryNet.com, Rickenbacker was given command of the 94th, and on that same day, he volunteered for solo patrol. He spotted a flight of five Fokkers and two Halberstadt CL2s near Billy France and dove into them. Firing as he went through the formation, he shot down one, one of each type. His aggressive actions that day earned him the French Croix de, de Guerre and the coveted U.S. Medal of Honor. He was then promoted to captain and earned the nickname Captain Eddie. He was the most successful U.S. Air Service fighter pilot alive, and the press dubbed him America's Ace of Aces. He disliked that title, however, because he felt like the honor carried the curse of death. Three others that had held the title before him, Luff Berry, David Putnam, and Frank Loop, all had died. At the end of the war, he flew a total of 300 combat hours, more than any other American pilot, and survived 134 aerial encounters with the enemy. 
Finally, he was promoted to major after his active duty. He then started to work as a businessman after the war. At the height of his business career, he purchased the majority of stock in the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and then was declared the president of it. Eventually, the position took his toll and he stepped down. His next business endeavor was working as head of sales for General Motors. This job allowed him to pay off most of his accumulated debt. And then finally, to end his professional career, he worked as a commercial pilot flying passengers all over the United States. Once he retired, he liked to give speeches to crowds of people recounting his life memories. Over the years, Old Fast Eddie had worked up quite the experiences. Over the years, Old Fast Eddie had worked up quite the experiences. According to ATI.com, the American fighter pilot had 26 kills, raced the Indy 500 four times, survived two plane crashes, and lived 24 days stranded at sea due to one of the plane crashes. Bravery and persistence got him to where he was, an honorable man. My last name would still be Rickenbacker today, but my great-grandpa had a mix-up in the 1950s and it got changed. <laughs> Unfortunately, Eddie's wife come down with a sickness that required them to go to Switzerland for treatment. While there, Eddie suffered from a stroke and then later come down with pneumonia. He died in Zurich, Switzerland, July 23, 1973, at the age of 82. I know he will always be remembered for at least one of his memory, many memorable feats, and most of all, I wish I would have gotten the opportunity at some point to talk with him about his life and past. <laughs>